Hi, everybody. Hopefully this is working. I'm getting the spinning, the spinning uh, little round thing, so hopefully this is working. Just a minute here. I haven't been able to get my screen to come up. There we go. Okay. Cool. So we got, I got a picture of myself. Hopefully everybody else can start seeing me. Hi, Lynn. Well, I got something else fixed. Well, I, I spent, I meant to say Lynn, but something popped up as I was typing. So, hi, Lynn. <laughs> hi, everybody. How are you? Sorry, I'm having a technical difficulty tonight. Oh, all kinds of people coming in. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Sure is a nice day today. It's not near as windy and stuff. Hello. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Jackie. Oh, Teresa's here. Hi, everybody. The, um, oh, good. The, um, I've been having trouble with this new interface that Facebook has, and I noticed that they have the number of people again on the screen where I can see it. So that's cool. I can actually see that now. Oh, hi, Barb. Hi, Pat. So uh, anyway, tonight we're going to do border blocks for um, starting over. I know some of you are working on the quilt. And um, tonight is the border block night and the assembly. Um, so we're, I'm not going to do like all of the assembly tonight, but I'm going to show you how to make the border block. And then I'm going to show you how to put the strips on the back because they're put together a little differently and how to trim the blocks because they are also trimmed differently than the others. Oh, hi, Clara. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Marsha. Sorry, my, I just put hand cream on my hands. They're so slippery, I can't hang on to anything. Hi, Denise. So anyway, we're going to do, um, we're going to do border blocks. I was going to show you my, my border. I've got a couple of my borders done. And um, here is the, one of the borders that I'm working on. This one's not quite done yet. This is the top border that needs to have the, we're going to make a block, and, and there's actually two blocks we'll work with tonight. Oh, yeah, all the, the romper, yes, I remember romper room. <laughs> so anyway, this is the border. Um, this is the top border, and um, that we're going to do, I've got one block to sew out yet, and then I have all the borders done. I'm so excited. Judy helped me with the borders. She's wonderful. She Helped me sew um, some of the borders out, so it didn't have, didn't take so long. And um, these are the corner blocks. So I did sew my corner blocks. We won't do those tonight, but the corner blocks are um, just applique blocks like the inside blocks were, just a little bit bigger. So here's my corner blocks, and I made all four of my corner blocks the same. So here's my four corner blocks. And then they will be sashed onto the ends of the borders, just like the center block. So I'll show that a little in a little bit too. Um, but the borders are done differently. They're going to be trimmed differently, and then they're sewn together. And then there's a little strip that you put over the back of the like the raw edge here. So and it's going to be just a little bit different than the. Um, assembly for the center so we already did the assembly a couple of months ago for the center but um so tonight we're going to work on border blocks okay so the first thing we're going to do is just do some sewing i think i'll wait a couple more minutes here since, since people are they are six inch squares no mitzi they would i think you cut them six inch but they're five inch squares because the borders are five inches so the borders are five inches wide. I also made a four inch border for those people who had the little, um, tiny little small four inch machines. So um, they could do the whole quilt in their little machine. But yeah, I, I'm doing the five inch ones. I think you cut the square six inches though, as I remember. Hi Donna. Hi Margaret. Boy, there's a bunch of people here tonight. That's awesome. And I can also see how many people are here, which is nice. I've always had to put my tablet or something up. And it's hard for me because the tablet um, is is like 
about 30 seconds behind me. And so I can see like what's really going on on my computer, but I couldn't see, you know, if there was any people here. So I'd start talking and it's like, is there anybody even here? <laughs> so now like they put that back. So they fixed that and they put it in this week. I hadn't checked this week. So, okay. So what time is it? It's about five after. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to pick my border block. We're going to do, I'm going to sew out a border block. While a couple of the pieces of it are sewing, I'll show you some trimming so we're not just sitting waiting for it to sew. Um, there's a couple parts that take just a little longer than the others. So, um, but we're going to go ahead and choose. I'll put the camera down here. We're going to choose the border block for starting over here. A second here. I'm going to go into embroidery and into my memory stick. And I am going to find my starting over folder, which is here. And I'm going to go into the border and corner blocks. So now when you get in here, you're going to see four files. The border block is the first one. This is the one I'm going to use. This is the 5 by 7 one. The next one over is a 4 by it says border block 4 by 4. So that's the one that I split to put into um, the little machines because they there's a special split hoop for those little 4 by 4 machines. So I split that block so that people could do that in their little bitty machine. Then there's a corner block and that's the one that's the 5 by 5 so so for the for the corners that we're going to use. And then there's another one that says corner block 4 by 4. So make sure you're using the 5 by, the five by 7 block which is this one that just says border block. Okay, So we're going to choose that one. Unless you want to do the four inch borders, you can do that too. But it is a split um, block made for that little bitty machine. So, okay, so we're going to choose that one. We're going to set it. This is the five by seven block, and I'm going to cl click embroidery. Okay, and then this one's done in a five by seven hoop. So, whoops, second here, I just dropped all my fabric on the floor. So, this one, I'm going to put my. Um, no show mesh in my 5 by 7 hoop. I'm going to lay, since I've got the light colored um, fabric, I can lay my batting in and then my top fabric. If you're doing a dark fabric, you'd have to do that. You'd have to um, put your dark fabric in later and trim it, but we don't have to with this light fabric. So I'm going to lay this in the hoop. And I'm going to put this in the machine. And I've been doing most of my piecing and stuff on my blocks with my neutral color to my fabric, my main fabric, which is white. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put my white thread in here. And then I'm going to move this camera over just a little bit more. There we go. So you can see it a little better. I don't have quite as good a picture of my um, camera anymore on this new this new uh, setup for Facebook. It's a little harder for me to adjust the camera now. So, okay, so we're ready to stitch the first the first just like the um, inside blocks. The first um, step is going to be like the placement lines and sort of the little roadmap for the border. So we're going to stitch that out. I'm going to kind of hold my fabric to make sure nothing decides to. rumple up on me hopefully. So it's just gonna do the outline and that's where the, the trimming the trimming um, lines are gonna be. There we go. And it's gonna do the two inside blocks. So remember these border blocks have those little squares in the center. So we're gonna do just a little bit of applique. I have um, my bobbin thread in my bobbin at this time and there's no backing on the on the block yet. So it's going to do the two little squares. And I think you have to do um, 42 border blocks, as I remember. They fit in between the, um, the like the setting triangles. So that, I think there's 42 of them. All right, so here's the second one, the second block. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the inside blocks. So let's, let's go over here again so you can see. I'm going to do the same thing. I sewed out stitch, step number one. 
If you were doing the dark fabric, you would have actually sewn out step number one just on the batting. But since my fabric is light colored, it can be underneath my applique pieces and it's fine. So I'm going to skip some of these steps that are coming up next because I don't need to trim the fabric out. And I'm going to hit my um, plus minus needle. So hopefully you see it here. Plus minus needle down here. And I'm going to run down to step number five because that's where my applique is going to start. So that's the way we did the blocks as well if you were doing light colored fabric. Okay. So the, the border is going to be the same. So I'm ready for my I'm ready for my top applique. Now on my my um, quilt. I don't know if you can see this. I'll put this over here where you can kind of see it. I have, this is one of the pages. This was like page um, 12 or 16. I can't remember. And I wrote, I wanted my blocks to be my squares of my border blocks to be in a certain order. So I'm working on this, this border right here. I've got, I've got this block done. This was the second to last block right here. And the, this is the block. So I needed to do blue and orange. On that one and then the last block is going to be green and then yellow so I'm gonna I have this little um, paper that I put in the order I wanted it to be I just wrote them in and then I'm just crossing them off as I'm doing it you don't have to do that you can do all your border blocks the same color you can do anything you want I just wanted mine to be whoops I just wonked the camera now it's blurry hopefully it'll there we go there we go um, but I wanted mine to be in a certain order all the way around the quilt. So that so they're all all five of my colors are in this, and I wanted all of them to be in a certain order. So I have that written out on this piece of paper. Okay, so I mean I need to do green first. Now the one thing that I learned when I did this border originally is um, we we did the original quilt, which is all done in batiks. We had absolutely no problems with the border. Uh, Judy and I when Judy and I did this but when we went to do the black quilt the fabric that we were using was a little bit ravelly and so when we went to do these borders these borders you know most of the blocks are kind of like you know they're not they're cut on the bias you know when you trim them they're kind of on the bias then are not all on the straight of the grain and I didn't have any trouble with the blocks at all. But when we went to the border, um, we had problems with the fabric actually fraying out around the, the satin stitching. And I think it was because everything was cut on the straight of the, the grain of the fabric. So I had to go back in and redigitize this block from the original quilt because I added more stitching on the inside of it to, to support it more. And then I made the satin stitches a little wider. But the one thing that I have learned with this now, for every time I'll, I make this quilt from now on, I will always take my fabric. This is my fabrics that I'm going to use. And I, I'm going to iron on either a piece of the, the Floriani no-show mesh, or I, in this case, I ironed on um, Shape Flex on the back of these, these pieces that are going to go in these squares. But just because I'm cutting on the straight of the grain, I, I've never had any trouble with the, the blocks inside having any problems, but I did have trouble with these border blocks. So this is a piece of fabric. It's two and a half inches square. I took my five inch squares and just cut it in quarters so you can really conserve on your fabric. And then I cut um, a piece of shape flex and ironed it on the back. So that's what this is right here. So the first block is going to be green. So I want to put my green up here. So I've already got my placement line because it already sewed it. And then, I'm, whoops, I've got cat hair on here too. Sorry, guys. And I'm going to put this over the placement line. And we're going to do step number five, which is going to be the tack down line for the top border block. So we're going to do that. I just, I'm doing that also with my neutral thread. Oh, hi, Jackie. Hi. Oh, hi, Debbie. Bev. Bev. Oh, hi, Bev. Okay, so we went around it twice. And step number six, we need to fast forward through. Remember, we're not going to sew any of those letters. We just have them there to help us. And I'm going to go forward through that. And then I, the second, the second uh, block is going to be my yellow. And I'm going to trim them both at the same time. 
just to save time. So I'm going to lay my yellow block. And this also has the shape flex on the back. I'm going to get, lay this over that one. And I'm going to stitch out number seven, which is the uh, placement or the tack down line for the second block. And then we will trim them close to the stitches. The borders go pretty quickly. They take about 16, 17 minutes. Um, you have to, it takes a little longer because you have to stop and trim, but it does go pretty quick, actually. But you do have to make quite a few of them. Okay, so here's our border blocks, and I'm going to trim these now close to the stitches. With this shape flex on here, it really keeps things from raveling. And, in fact, the black quilt that I, I showed you a picture of that we made some years ago, Judy... Um, Judy sewed the whole, basically sewed the whole quilt while I was putting it together. And the border uh, had to be removed. I had to take the border off and redo all the border blocks because all of these border blocks were, were raveling. So I had to take all the board, after we got done with the original promotion and we needed it for a certain reason. And as soon as we did, got that, I tore the, the whole border off that quilt and re-sewed all the border blocks again with shape flex i think at that time i used the floriani um the floriani uh, no show mesh fusible which works just fine i just happen to have a bunch of shape flex in the house so that works very well okay okay so we've got these trimmed close to the stitches at this point number eight is going to be the backing we're going to go ahead and put our backing on now so i'm going to take this out of the machine going to flip it over. I'm going to use my fabric glue stick and I am going to, whoops, looks like I need to push it up. I'm going to put, run the glue stick along the outside edge and I'm going to lay my back fabric, you know, with the right side up on the back here. Make sure I got it lined up. And then I'm going to flip this over and press down so that I know it's attached to the back and slip this back into the machine. Then I'm going to I'm going to peek underneath to make sure I have, don't have any flipper dues under there. Okay. Then it's going to stitch around the outside to stitch on that backing. So that's step number 8. going to make sure nothing gets caught. I think everything should be fine. So hopefully everybody's been having a good week. I've been working on the quilt and I put a picture of the center of the quilt up. Did everybody get to see it? That I got the whole center of the quilt put together and um, it's over on the, I didn't hold it up because it's so big. Um, I've got it laying on my long arm and then I've got all the borders put together except for the last two blocks that we're going to do tonight. So then I'll do those. Okay. So we got the backing stitched on. The next step is going to be the quilting. I put a little uh, stippled, stippled quilting on either side of the blocks, and that is the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this. I'm going to leave my white bobbin thread in because that's what I've been using on the back of mine instead of changing to white embroidery thread. I like to use the matching thread um, when I put the back on. But the white is so close, I've just been using bobbin thread. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the stippling. And I may go ahead, this step, and then the next step is going to be a decorative stitch along the edge of that stippling. So while that's working on that, I'm going to move over to the other table here and we're going to do some trimming while this stitches a little bit because it takes a little bit for it to stitch. So if you give me a second, I'm going to move my camera over here and we're going to talk about the trimming while this is stitching the next two steps. All right. So I got to get my camera moved. It's always hard to get it on over here. Okay. Now the trimming for these blocks, hopefully you can see, I'll get it down here on my mat. I have to kind of look backwards to get it. 
Okay. Um, the trimming on these blocks is on page, let me get my book over here. The trimming for the border block starts on page three. And when you assemble the borders on the, the quilt, if you look at this block, all of the long sides of the block are going to be trimmed just like we trimmed the the squares that go in the center, the blocks that go in the center. They're going to be trimmed through all layers, including the batting and the backing, a quarter inch from the edge because the borders will be stripped onto the quilt just like the blocks are put together. Okay, so we need to have that quarter inch on both sides. One side's going to be attached to the center of the quilt. The other side is going to be the binding. So I just took all my blocks, and that's the easiest way to start. I took all my border blocks, and I trimmed them through all the layers on both of the long sides. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So I just took the whole pile for each row that I was doing and put them on the uh, and cut them through each or through the three layers a quarter of an inch from the basting stitches now the the outside blocks or the outside edges or short edges are going to be done differently than the other um, blocks because we're going to stitch these together and we're only going to have a strip to cover up a raw edge on the back so these are done differently so when I sewed these together, I don't know if you can see these. Can you see this little strip here? There's a raw edge under there. And we're going to sew them together, right sides together. And there'll be a raw edge here. Then we're going to lay it flat. And then we're going to cover it with a little strip like this instead. So this is assembled a little bit differently. But when you look at the quilt picture here that I had, whoops, what did I just drop? Something I just dropped on the floor. I'm sure it's something I need. <laughs> Just a second here. Okay. Um, the quilt is put together, and there's a picture that shows this. But if you can see, the strip along here is just like how we assembled the whole quilt. And on the top border and the bottom border, the the corner block is stripped on to the top and bottom border on each corner. Okay, so you're going to put your four corner blocks on with the stripping method that we did for the center, the center um, assembly. So here are so these are these corner blocks are are cut through all three layers all the way around quarter of an inch. So then I would take my strips. And I'm going to strip that onto the each end. So this is my corner block, okay? And I'll have one on the other end too. So when I go to trim my border blocks, I have to trim them in a certain way so that I can do that, okay? So if you give me a second here, I'm going to go back over to the machine quickly. And I'm going to change the thread because the next step is going to take a minute to stitch. I'll turn this around so you can see what I'm going to do. The next step is going to be um, the decorative stitch that's going to run down along the, the stippling. So if you give me a minute, oh, I forgot my thread too. I got to get the blue thread. Oh, I had all my colors out and I forgot one of my colors. So I need the blue because I did mine. I picked one of my colors. I like blue, so I picked the blue for my decorative stitch on my border. And you can do them all different colors. You can do it in a variegated. You can do all kinds of things. So I'm going to go ahead and change the blue bobbin thread. Put the blue in the bobbin too so it's pretty on the back. And I'm going to get my blue thread for the top. Give me a second. I've got to get this big spool of light out of the way. And get my blue. And while this is stitching, we will go back to the trimming. Okay, put my bobbin door back on, and then it's going to do the little diamonds on the each side of the square. So it's going to do the little diamonds. Okay, 
So let's go back over here and we'll talk about trimming while it's sewing the diamonds. Because that one takes the longest. Okay. So right now it's doing these diamonds right here. Okay. All right. Now, when I look at my, my little road map here that I needed to, to do, my green, I have to get to the top. Here's my top. Okay. So my blue and orange block, that's this one. This is the second to the last block. The blue is going to be to the top and the orange is to the bottom. But this one is one of the center blocks. So this is how I need to trim it. I need to trim it so that I can sew both ends together. Okay, and then the last block, once we finish it, I will be trimmed slightly differently because it's against one of the corner blocks. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. I'll show you two different ways to trim these blocks. The old fashioned way that we used to use, like this, we would take the, the top fabric. All I want to do is I want to trim this batting and the backing and the stabilizer away because I just need something to stitch together. So I'm going to take the top, and this is all in the book too, so you can see that. I'm just going to take this top piece of fabric and I'm going to do a finger press and press it back. Okay. Then I'm going to take my ruler, just a plain rotary ruler, and I'm going to put the edge of my ruler just in front of that crease that I just made, just in front of it. And then I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to trim away the backing, the batting, and the stabilizer. Okay, so that's the pieces that I did. Then I'm going to flip this back down. Okay, so I've just flipped this back down and now I'm going to trim just this fabric one quarter of an inch from the, the basting stitches. So there's no batting in there because it's easier to sew together without the batting. So I'll see if I can hold it up real close so you can see it. Okay, so there's, see that there's just a little flip of fabric and no batting. So this block, most of the blocks are going to be trimmed like this on both ends okay so we'll do the do the second one with the with the regular rotary cutter uh, and ruler method so I'm going to slide this back and then I'll show you a different method on the next block once we get it out of the machine I'm going to fold this back and finger press it I'm going to lay my ro ruler just in front of the fold and and if you can avoid cutting through your fold it's the best thing I'm going to trim all of those pieces off okay I'm gonna flip this back up and now I'm going to trim that piece of fabric a quarter of an inch from the basting stitch like that so most of your blocks your, your border blocks are going to be trimmed like this and here's that little flip okay so most of them will be trimmed that way when you get to the corners though and that this next block after it's sewn and we will trim it too before we end tonight we need the fabric all three layers on the corners so you can see here i hopefully you can see this where this the strip is right here and where the strip is right here those need to be um, through all three layers so when i i talk about you need eight blocks there's one two three, four, I'm down in this corner, five, six, and seven, eight that are trimmed with one side like this and the other side through all three layers, okay? So if you're putting your, your, your border blocks in a certain order, you kind of have to lay them out so you know which one you have to, to um, trim differently. If your border blocks are all the same, it, it, it's easy. You just need eight blocks trimmed that way. But mine, I had in a certain order, so I wanted to make sure that I had them all laid out correctly. Okay? So this last one that we're doing, I'm doing the top row here, the green and the yellow one that we're doing in the machine right now, I'm going to trim this one differently. Okay, so let's go back over here to the machine. I'm going to move the camera again because we have some things to do on the machine. And then we'll come back to the trimming again. It's actually easier to move the whole, um, I have like a little arm that this puts on. It's a lot. Oh, hi, Judy. Hi, Jackie. Okay, so here is 
our blue border decorative and then the, the stippling is the white right here okay so the next step is going to be the decorative stitch in the top block so i'm going to pull this out and i want that to be green so i'm going to put my green in the bobbin because i like the pretty colors on the back and we'll change the blue thread to the green it's very exciting this is the last border block then i can stitch the whole thing together thank you judy for helping me out judy made three of my borders for me so i could get it done in about the time that the class was done it takes quite a while to put this together so the assembly is it does take a little time okay so let's put this back in and we'll do the decorative stitching on in the top square whoops so if i have to put the little flipper down there we go so we're going to get the decorative stitching done we'll get ready i think i need the yeah i need the yellow next so i'll get the red yellow ready so when i redigitize this i put more stitches in the center so that it held everything down better also because there was a like the original quilt if you see the original quilt up close, there's a couple things we changed in it. There's actually two things. Um, there was a lot of motif stitches for the um, borders or the edges of the um, around the edges instead of satin stitches. So, so the original quilt is different than the actual pattern. <laughs> so we we did some changes after we sewed it a couple of times. So, all right. So we got the green done. Let's pull this out in a second and get this little clip there. And then we'll pull this out and we'll do the yellow. So I've been working on this pretty hard this week. I did three rows this week and I put all the borders together and I sewed the last border. So I've been working on it pretty much all week. So that my goal was to get it almost all done. I think I'm gonna finish it this next week after I do um, Let Freedom Ring. So remember in May, we're gonna do Let Freedom Ring. I'm gonna put a post up to remind everybody to. And I need to make a video for the trimming on that one. The That one is put together more like these borders are on this one. So um, it'll be a little different to do. So that's what I'm gonna work on this week. All right, we'll get this one in there. So we're going to do the yellow. Oops. Looks like I have, oh, there we go. And we'll do the decorative stitch on the yellow. And I think I got all the coat. Oh, yep, I got my silver out. That's the next one. So it's got the... It's got a lot more stitching in it. The original one only had a couple of lines of stitching on the blocks, and so we wanted to make sure that they wouldn't um, come apart or fray on the edges. So we added some stitches. And that that uh, Shape Flex or um, the No Show Mesh Fusible works really well on the um, works really well on the back, so it keeps keeps it from fraying. All right, so there is the ready for the blocks then we need the satin stitches on the blocks i am going to trim this over turn this over and um trim some of my little tails here get them out of the way i like to kind of trim as i go saves time at the end so we'll trim a couple of these little tails there we go then I'll put the gray in because i put all made all of my blocks with the gray around a gray stitches around like I did the inside box. Get my gray thread. Here's whoops. Here's my gray. I'm getting real low on the gray because I used a lot of it. Used almost a whole 5,000 meter spool because I ordered a whole new spool of that when I started this. All right. Ready for the last two squares now I made these two separate steps but I'm going to show you a little trick since I'm using the same color for both of my squares the, the original quilt we used a different color around each square 
but I'm using the same one. So I don't need the machine to stop in between these last two. So this is how you do that. You can go into, I'm going to click OK here since we had moved forward a couple times. But if I go into layout, um, if you have uh, the Dream Machine, the Quattro's, that kind of stuff, this also says edit up here, but the, the Luminaire say layout. I'm going to click that button. And then see this little button that looks like a, a spool with little dots under it? That's the monochrome button. So if I touch that, the machine's going to continue to sew through the last two steps now because I don't need to make it stop because I want it to be silver on both of them. So I just made it so now it won't stop and it'll just keep stitching. Let's see if I can get the camera to turn again. There we go. Whoops. All right, now we're going to do the satin stitches along the outside edge. So you can see these, these border blocks don't take a real long time to do. But I think it's on the machine, it's about 16 minutes. So it doesn't take too long. Now, does anybody have questions about the trimming? So if we look at the book here quickly, I'll pull this back a little bit while this is stitching so we can look at the book. Here's the picture of the block and how I trimmed through all three layers on the on the long sides okay and then I talked about the short side on one short side of eight border blocks you need to go through all the layers just like you did on the blocks on the center and the other one is going to be trimmed like I just showed you so most of the border blocks are, sh are trimmed like the one I just showed you it's just eight out of the 42 are going to be trimmed like we're going to do this one Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to sew them together. But does anybody have any questions about the border blocks? Is this making sense to you? And I got some really good pictures in the book, too, of how to put it together. Oh, I'll have to show you what I actually made today. I've been trying to resist these, but I finally, we're going to have to have them. I made some masks. But my dad and I like the Cubs, so we made... I made Cubs masks for Dad and I. <laughs> I made two for me and two for my father. So we that's what I've been working on this afternoon. I made masks. <laughs> I made five of them. I haven't been, I've been trying to avoid making them, but I figured it was time I had to have some. So, so a bunch of the, the rest of you have been making masks, haven't you? Okay, we're ready for the C, and I'll see it didn't stop between the two because I put the monochrome on. So it's going to stitch out the second one. Maybe everybody's asleep. Oh, where did you find the cub fabric? I've been hunting for some. Oh, hi, Nancy. Yes, I made, oh, the cubs fabric. I got this at Tommy. Um, no, I got it at Joanne's. I got this at Joanne's. No, Clara, they're not. I actually just sewed these. Um, Judy sent me the um, the mask pattern that the Quilt Guild has been using for their their um, to be giving away, and I just sewed these. So. I, it looks a lot like the Kimberbell one. The Kimberbell one has the little the little things over here though. So, but I thought this one was kind of neat. It looks they they fit good. I I did make the elastic shorter for me because the elastic was kind of long. Looks like I might have gotten this one twisted. Oh well. But the the elastic was a little long for me, so I made it a little shorter. Because they weren't very snug, they were kind of loose on my face, so. So I finally made myself sit down and make some today. <laughs> yeah, the Cubs fabric, isn't that cute, Cubs fabric? I made my dad a Cubs quilt, Nancy, and um, also a tuffet out of the Cubs fabric, and that's some of my leftover fabric. And then I made him a rug. I think that's his rug fabric out of the Cubs fabric. He loves the Cubs. so He's actually been watching some of the Cubs, um, like the reruns. They reran the World Series. And he finally got to see the Cubs win the World Series because he went to bed before they won the World Series. So he actually um, got to watch it. <laughs> okay, so here is our block. It's all done. And now I'll show you how to trim it. And then we'll change the foot on the machine and I'll show you how to stitch these together.
Okay, so let's take it out of the hoop and then we'll go back over here to the other table. So bear with me while I move the camera again. All right, go back over here. Put it on there so it won't move. Okay, so this is the last block and this is going to be the one that's next to my uh, border block, my corner block, I should say. So I have to trim one end of this one through all the layers, okay? So this, I have to make sure I get the get it in the right order. So the, the block, the square that's going to be next to my corner block is the yellow. So this side needs to be trimmed through all three layers, okay? And the two long ends need to be um, trimmed through all three layers. So let's get this down just a little bit so you can see. Yeah, they really changed this interface a lot. It's very hard to get the camera right. Okay, so I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put the quarter inch marking on my basting stitches and I'm going to trim through all three layers on the two long sides like that. Okay, turn it over and do the same thing. Like that. Oops, I'm sure I get it right. I like this ruler. This is a ruler from Missouri Star, and it's got it's that yellow. So it's like it's like it kind of glows. So it's very easy to see where you're trimming. Okay, so there is my quarter of an inch on either side through all three layers. Okay, then. On this, on my chart here, I need the yellow side to be through all three layers as well because I that's going to be next to my corner block. Okay, so I'm going to my yellow. Make sure I got it right. Yep, yellow. So the yellow, I'm going to go do the same thing. I'm going to line up my quarter inch marking and I'm going to trim it through all three layers like that. Okay, so there's those three sides. So this is a corner block. And then when I get ready to strip these together, I'm going to put the little strips right there, just like we had on the other ones. And then this block will be stripped to the corner block. Okay. Then this side, we're going to trim like we did this other inside block. So I'm going to show you another method of doing this. Um, the Hoop Sisters have this cool ruler. It's called the George Trimmer. And we all had these because we did a bunch of the um, Hoop Sisters quilts. And I like this because you can see, see there's a little bit of a, a ridge right here. And I'm going to have to grab my other rotary cutter quickly. But there's like a little ridge right here to help you trim. So instead of flipping this back like I did with the other, with the other ruler, I can just kind of pick it up like that. I can take this ridge and move it right up to the stitching and you just kind of push it up to the stitching like that and then you just flip this down and it holds that, that piece of fabric away from your rotary cutter so that you don't take the chance of it being cut through. And But the only thing you do have to do with this George trimmer you do have to use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter instead of only a 45 because it's so it's so tall here the 45 will hit on the top of it so i'm going to trim this off like that just like i did before and then i can flip this down so it's just the same as i did before so you can either get one of these they're kind of neat if you have to do a bunch of these it is kind of neat it, it's it's gone up in price a lot i went and looked on hoopsisters.com and this ruler is like $40 now. So I thought it was kind of expensive. I usually just use a regular one, but I got it out to do a few because I had so many to do like that. So there's my quarter inch, and that's the little flip. Okay. And then this one, I went through all the layers because this one's going to be against my block, my corner block. Okay. So the next step to this is going to be, I'm going to get some of these out of my way here. We have to sew the rest of these on to the border that I already had started. So I have to make sure that I'm sewing on the correct end. 
I think, yes, so this is pink, and then the blue block is next. So I have my little roadmap here. But I also need to have some bias tape. Oh, Clara, Clara, these, somebody, Clara said she liked them. These are, these are the Martelli rotary color, cutters, and these are ergonomic. These are the best rotary cutters ever, and um, they're up on our website. They're about $29. They're $24.99 for the, the smaller one, and the bigger one is uh, $30, I think, and they're up on our website. So um, I love these. I don't use a regular rotor cutter at all. I don't even own one now. They're all gone. <laughs> so these are Martelli rotor cutters, but they're ergonomic, and they're, like, this is my left-handed one. You know, I'm left-handed, and they make a right-handed one. The right-handed ones have red handles, so you can tell the difference. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, when I flip this over, did you notice that I had these little strips on here? So when we when we get to go to sew this together, first thing I have to do is I have to make some bias tape. So I'm going to show you, um, you're going to take those one inch strips that we've been cutting and using for the rest of the quilt, and we're going to make bias tape out of it. So it was funny, when we first started doing these with Hoop Sisters, what they did is they told you to take your one inch strip or your one and a half inch strip and just fold the two raw edges in and then iron it like this. And Judy and I got to thinking about this, thinking, hmm, there has to be an easier way to do this, right? So the first thing we bought was, you know, a manual um, bias tape maker. You know, these are the little bias tape makers. You know, you, you, you shove your fabric down in here and then you pull it out the tip and you use your iron and you just go along and, and iron it down, right? So this works really slick. But then we got even a little bit niftier here, and um, Simplicity used to make this. And unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. So it's going to be really hard to find them, and if you do, they're going to be really expensive. But this is a Simplicity bias tape maker. I just love this little gadget. I have three of these, and I just, just absolutely love them. This is my half-inch tip. So you're making half-inch uh, bias tape. For this project okay so this is my half inch my other one my manual one is a little smaller but i didn't have i don't have another manual one that was the only one i had so i wanted to show it to you but this tip um is half inch bias tape tip okay and then what i can do is i can turn this on and it's got a little motor in it and so i put it through the tip put the tip into the machine whoops this is my tip that's falling apart i got one tip that's kind of bad and then I put my fabric under here like this, and then I run it, and it makes the bias tape automatically. And you can go through and make bias tape like you would not believe doing this. Like I took four or five strips and, and sewed them together end to end, and then made all my bias tape for the entire quilt except for this last border. So this little this little gem, if you can find one of these, um, it, it's well worth it. I also make all my quilt binding with it. It has the, the quilt binding tips. The hardest thing to find now, you can sometimes find the machines. It's getting very hard to find the tips. And if you do find them, they're really expensive. But um, anyway, some of you may already have these. But um, this was a little toy that I bought some years ago. And I just love the thing. So I thought I'd show it to you anyway. And then otherwise, you can get a manual bias tape maker. And it makes um, making bias tape for this. Because you do need quite a bit. I think I used about five full strips, one inch strips, for the bias tape for the borders. Okay. So anyway, I made this with my little bias tape maker. Okay. So we're going to go back over to the machine. And I'll move the camera over. And then I'm going to sew this border together, border pieces together, so you can see how that works. And I need to change the foot on the machine. So are there any other questions? Is this all making sense how we're getting our border blocks done? The embroidery part's really easy. And then the assembly actually goes pretty quick for these. So I can hear my... This is being contrary tonight. Got to get it pushed in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Because it's not tight enough, it, it moves when I'm sewing. Okay. So we're going to get the hoop out of the way here. And my thread. Now, I've been putting together my quilt with um, 
just regular cotton thread and um, in the past almost all the other ones I've always done with my embroidery thread but I just happened to have some some cotton thread that was the same color that I wanted so I've just been using it so I'm gonna get my thread out now the one thing I did do with my strip because believe it or not we're actually gonna sew on the back of the quilt I did want my strips when I'm sewing this together I don't know if you can see this on here. You can see a slight, we're going to use a serpentine stitch, but I didn't want this stitch to show much. So the way I usually do this, there's a couple ways to do it. My fabric was white, so I just use white thread, and it really hides it pretty well. You can see the shape of the serpentine, but you can't really see the thread. Um, or the other thing that works very, very well is a monofilament thread. If you have fabric that is an unusual color and you can't find something that matches well enough then use the um, monofilament and it just blends right in and it just shows your texture here especially if you're going through several different colors of fabric mine were all white so i just use the white so that's your two options for this but we're actually going to sew believe it or not we're going to sew from the back of the quilt to the front and the bobbin thread is what you're seeing on the front okay I know that usually scares everybody when I tell them that so okay so I'm gonna go to the sewing side of the machine now we're gonna change our foot maybe get my foot up here Okay, and I'm going to use, put my white cotton thread in that I've been using to assemble my borders. And when I stitch these together, I need to find my, oh, here's my white bobbin. Okay. When I stitch these together, it is a quarter inch seam. Sorry, I just wonked the camera again. Um, it is a quarter inch seam, but what I usually do is I use the straight stitch in the center because I like to use the line, the you know that that trimming line that we used. I like to use that to help me judge where I am going to be stitching. So. I need to look at my roadmap, and after this pink square, I believe I need, should I get the right one? Yep. The pink, and then it's the blue. So my first block that I trimmed, I'm going to put next. So this one's going to be the next one. So when we trim, when, this is going to be put together a little differently. We're going to put them right sides together, and I'm going to get a pin. And what I want to do is I want to, you know, line up my edges with the right sides together. And the other thing I like to do is I like to check in here to make sure that my blue borders are coming together where I want them and make sure everything's lined up well. And I'm just going to put one pin in the center here like that. I'm going to go to the sewing screen on my machine. One thing I've always loved about these machines is I don't have to take the embroidery unit off to sew with it. I can just do everything with the embroidery unit on. And the new the new Luminaire, I don't know if some of you have noticed as I'm working on this and that have like dream machines, do you notice that there's, there's no open like slot on this, this embroidery unit? Um, I just love, that was the first thing I noticed when I got the Luminaire because I always would get pins down in the slot and so Ron was always having to retrieve pins out of my machine. And I'm, I'm sure he's glad that I have this one now because he doesn't have to do that anymore. Okay, so I've got this all lined up. And that line, I don't know if I can get any closer. I hope I can just a little bit. That stitching line that we trimmed on, I am going to stitch about one stitch on the inside of that when I stitch down. And that's why I want to leave my, fab, my, my needle in the center while I'm doing this because then I can look at that line and I'm going to sew on this border block. Second here, get it lined up. I'm going to drop my needle. 
and I'm gonna I'm stitching about one stitch inside that line so just so I don't see I don't want to see those those um, stitches on my border so see how Jan does with in front of everybody tonight sometimes I have to rip these off and do them again just so you know <laughs> every now and then I miss so okay so let's see how we did then I'm going to turn it right sides out that looks pretty good okay so there's that that one so this was the second to the last border block get that out of there okay and then the last one have to look at my road map again the last one says the remember the yellow was going to be against the corner block so the green one is going to be next so it's the orange and then the green so here's my green one and i trimmed that just through you know the batting and everything's gone okay then we're going to put these two right sides together i'm so excited this is the last block just those little things in life that excite me you know Okay, so we're going to get this all lined up, right sides together. And then I'm going to check to make sure that my little borders line up. You look pretty good. Make sure this one looks good. That one looks good too. Just make sure. And then I'm going to put a pin in here. Now I, I am driving over these pins. They're very, very thin pins. And I don't go over them real fast. But that way nothing scooches on me. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to stitch about, a, about one stitch inside that basting line. Make sure I get this straight here. There we go. You know, so I slowed down when I got to that pin. Okay, I'm going to take my pin out. We'll see how we did here. Okay, so this one, I can see some of that stitching. And I and so one of these must have scooted a little bit on me. So I'm actually going to flip this over. This is how I fix this. I'm going to flip it over so I'm sewing on this block instead. So I'm going to flip it over this way. And I'm going to stitch inside that line again because I must have one of them must have scooped scooched forward on me so I'm going to go ahead and sew because I, I need to sew about halfway down the block and then we'll try that again so you can fix it without ripping the whole thing out oh yeah that looks much better okay so there's the last block there's still a little bit showing on that block and it's on this side so I could actually move this over. I think I will just stitch it down again. So sometimes this is how I fix things. I don't tear everything out. I just stitch inside the line that I'm seeing slightly. And I must not have quite got all down far enough. So let's just stitch all the way down the whole block. And if you if you can see the, the thread on like one block, flip it to that side so you're actually sewing on that block. Oh, that looks much better. There we go. Okay. So there's my last block, all stitched on, all ready to be put together. Okay, so then the final step is we need to cover up all those raw edges. So what I've been doing, see where I laid my scissors, I must have put them in the drawer here, okay. Um, I like to trim these quarter inch seams right here, these little flippies, I like to trim these down to about an eighth of an inch. And I talk about that in the instructions. Now, in the instructions in the past, what I used to do is I always used to open these up and, and then trim them. But I found that it works just as well just to trim them off and then open them up with an iron. And just, just open the blocks up. And if it's a little bit wrinkly on the back, you're going to be covering up, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to trim these off so they're a little closer and make sure our bias tape will cover well. Okay. Like that. Whoops, let's put this pin down here so I won't stab myself. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to take this over to the ironing board. Okay. And I'm going to just tip the camera up so you can watch me iron. I've got my fancy cool iron on it on here, the, the one that's the Evolution iron, you know, the, the Euro Steam iron. Because I like this stuff to be really flat. 
And I'm going to lay these blocks down. I've already done these blocks up here, so these last two blocks need to be pressed down. So I'm going to press from the front first, and I'm going to press these down really well. Shoot, shoot them with steam like that. So they're nice and flat, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the back. So to make sure they're nice and flat. And the little seam, is it's okay if it's not open because you're gonna, we're going to cover it up with that bias tape and it's going to be just fine. But we just want the front to be nice and flat. So here's my nice flat border blocks. Okay? And they're very, very, the, that Eurosteam iron, if you haven't gotten one of those, that, that is like the best iron ever. And if you want it flat, that is the iron to flatten it. Okay? So now I have to find my piece of bias tape, so I wonder where it landed. Hmm, well, here it is. All right. So we got these all pressed down. Turn the camera back. We got these all pressed down. And yes, what is your iron? Oh, my iron, it's a it's a Eurosteam Evolution iron, Nancy. And you they they I didn't check before tonight, but they usually have them on QVC. And I got mine at a quilt show. But QVC often has them. And they are, it's a, it's a boiler iron that um, shoots um, 50 pounds of pressure um, steam, 50 pounds of pressure. And it's, so it's a, it's a different type of iron. And man, I'll tell you, it's, it's great, especially when you're doing this kind of stuff. Okay. So here's that raw seam. You know, we don't want that ugly raw seam to show. So we're going to take, here's our half inch bias tape that we made. Okay. And we're going to cover this up. Now, in the instructions, I talk about using that, that wash away wonder tape and then taping it down. But honestly, when I get to the borders, I like to cheat a little bit. And I just use a little fabric glue stick. I just run it around along my, my uh, seam here. And then I take my bias tape and I just lay it right over the center of it. And I stick it down with the glue stick. And that seems to work really well for me. I've always done these strips mostly with the glue stick. I did it by, I learned it by accident because I ran out of tape once and I was doing a great big quilt and I needed to finish it. So I thought, well, maybe the glue stick will work. So I used it and it works very well. And then and it saves on that tape. The tape works the best for the other type of assembly with the, the, the inside blocks. I've never been able to get that to work well with glue because it's just, it's messy and then I got glue on my quilt. But this works really, really well. Okay, so there's, I've got that glued down. And at this point, I'm gonna go get my serpentine stitch. And my serpentine that I used was on my quilt tab and it was number Q18, and that's a serpentine. And I kind of played around with my settings a little bit, and what I chose for this half inch, um, this half inch bias tape was four, four millimeters wide and 1.2 millimeters long. That seemed to be a nice, pleasant um, shape, and it wasn't too short. So that is what I've been using on all my borders. and. Um, some of the um, like Hoop Sisters ones, I know Judy said she was just putting hers together. They use wider bias tape, so you would need to use maybe a little wider width there. But the 4 and the 1.2 seem to work well for me. So we're going to go back over here. So I've got my, my um, serpentine set up. And when you do these, so this is always the scary part. We're going to sew from the back of the quilt, okay? Don't be afraid, it's going to look just fine on the front, especially with that serpentine, because it's not straight. And so that's why I always choose that one, because then if you're not perfectly straight, who's going to know? It's a serpentine stitch. So that little notch that's in the center of my foot, I'm going to put that right down on the edge of my strip. And I'm going to put my foot right on the edge of the border block, and I'm going to drop my needle. And I want the serpentine to just go off the edge on the right, but I want it to be mostly on the inside of the strip. So there's going to be two rows going down. We're going to do one on each side, okay? So I'm going to do the first side. I've got my, my little notch on the center or right on the uh, edge of the strip there. 
and then we're going to do our serpentine. And I'm just going off the edge on the right. It's just going off the edge. Most of the stitching is on the strip. Going all the way to the bottom, okay? And then I'm going to cut. And the trick that I found with this little, these little um, serpentines is if you, um, if you, uh, oh yeah, Jackie, it's one of my favorites too. If you do the serpentine stitch from the same side of the block or whatever you're doing, the, the little bumps actually line up pretty well. So I always start on the same side when I do this. So now to do the other side of the strip, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my, um, I'm going to put my, the little notch in the center of the foot right on the edge of the strip. And I want most, I'm going to have it just, just go off the left, but most of it's going to be on the strip. Okay, so it's going, oops, there we go. And it's just going off on the left. Most of the stitching is on the strip. Okay, and then we'll cut. And then we're going to trim this off like that. So like when I'm doing a bunch of these, like with all the borders, I had needed about um, five strips. I think it was five strips. I, I did originally four and then I had a couple pieces left. So it was a, it's about five strips that I made into bias tape. So I just sewed them all end to end and then just trimmed them as I went. All right, so let's do this other one. We got one more to do here. Okay, did the other ones this morning. So this, this border would be all done when we're done here. I'm so excited that this is the last border. Okay, we're going to use the glue stick, and I'm going to stick my bias tape onto the seam. Now, when we do, um, in May, when we do the um, Let Freedom Ring, the whole quilt is actually put together this way. So then you'll use longer strips, but the whole quilt is assembled this way. The little wall hanging, I should say. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to line this up with the little notch, drop my needle, Make sure I got this one straight, okay, there we go, and then I'm going to use my serpentine, I'm just going off the right edge of it, okay, and then we're going to go start from the same side, up here and I'm going to do the other side the little notch right on the edge of the strip and most of the most of the stitching is going to be on the inside and it's just barely going to go off the left that way it doesn't flip open you don't want the little strips to flip open on the back and I'm doing this with my white thread I often do this depending on like when I go to do the um, Yes, Nancy, I will put a picture up. I'm going to put a little post up about Let Freedom Ring. If you go to the, um, if you go to this group, the uh, Sew Along With Jan group, there's a picture up there of it already. But I'll put, I'm going to put another one up probably tomorrow. Okay, so there's this one. Hi, Karen. And let's see, where did I, oh, here's my scissors. Then we're going to trim this off. Trim off the other ends here. So that they're even. Like that. And then the last step will be putting the border blocks on. I had, didn't put the border blocks on because I need to make sure I get them on the right way. My border blocks, I made them all the same. And I wanted the pink block to be up. So I need to make sure that I had to be careful that I got them on correctly. So th those are going to be done with the strips. So I'm going to strip those on. And then the borders will be stripped to the quilt, just like all of the rows were put together. Okay. So the only thing that was different was how I put these, these blocks together. But the rest of it's all done with the strips, just like we did the rest of the quilts. Okay. So the, the, this border is put together with the exception of these. This is the top border. So I'll put I put the um, corner blocks on my top and bottom border. You're going to put the two side borders on first 
and then you will assemble the top border and the bottom border. So the side ones go on first and then the top and the bottom last, okay? All right, that is the assembly and the, pre the preparation of the borders. We're starting over. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's quilts. So I know a bunch of you are making them. How many people have tried any border blocks? Has anybody tried any border blocks yet? Has any made, anybody made any yet? Yes, Nancy, the center of the quilt is also on the group. So if you go look on the group, so along with Jan, there's a picture of it up there. The, it's hard to hold it up. It's kind of big, so you aren't going to be able to see it. So I put a picture up on the group. And Let Freedom Ring is there as well. Okay, so we'll start Let Freedom Ring. It'll, that'll be in May. It'll be the um, second and third week of May. Friday, I got my finger under the needle. Oh, no, Karen, what did you do that for? <laughs> oh, no, Karen hit her finger with the, with the machine. Ow, I hate that when that happens. Okay, so next week, we will be doing a scan and cut class. We're going to cut fabric with the scan and cut. Really from the beginning, we're going to talk about once we are done with the quilt, isn't there a spray to protect the colors? Um, what I do, Mitzi, if I don't spray my quilts with anything because I'm allergic to a lot of stuff, what I do is if they need to be washed, I put in, especially yours because you have a light color and then a very strong red, I put, I buy color catchers and I wash them with about three or four color catchers in it on cold water and normally it's okay. But I always use color catchers on my quilts when I wash them. And especially when I wash them the first time, and I always wash them in cold water the first time. And then I wash them in warm with color catchers after that so that the, the colors don't bleed. So, okay, is there are there any other questions about the border assembly? Did everybody understand what I did tonight and all the trimming and everything? There's good pictures in the book. So if you have questions, you can look at the pictures in the book too. Okay. So next week, we're going to be cutting fabric on the scan and cut. And that will be, what day is that? The 20, what is that? What is next Sunday? I don't even know what the date is. I'm having a hard time with the dates when I'm since I'm home. <laughs> color catchers, yes. Color catchers are awesome. I use them a lot. So next week is the 26th. So um, we will be cutting fabric, and I'm going to go more in depth on cutting fabric with the scan and cut, using the mats, you know, preparing your mat, get, knowing what blades to use, all of that. So that we're going to really kind of go from the very beginning um, with uh, um, with the skin, with the cutting of the of the, the fabric. And actually, what we're going to cut is we're going to use. I'm going to show you also how to prepare a design. A PES design that is not um, does not have SVGs, so you can just use your PES um, file that you have. And I'm going to use the files out of um, Let Freedom Ring, so so you can see how we did that. I've actually got three ways that I cut those. Um, so yeah, you need to learn your new machine. So we're going to cut. So so you could cut all your stars out for Let Freedom Ring if you want to do Let Freedom Ring. So I will put a post up about Let Freedom Ring. Um, it's fifteen dollars if you want the design, and it's the um, do, I, do I have I can hit that one I can hold up. It's not so it's not so small or it's not so big. Let me grab it. So I'll put another picture up. So here's Let Freedom Ring. It's wall hanging, and this one's all assembled the way we just assembled the. Um, borders. So this the whole thing is assembled that way. And then we'll learn about cutting. So next week we're going to actually cut these stars out. And I'll show you how to cut them out from your PES files. Okay. So that's what we're going to do next week. And then the first week in May will be a um, software class, the first Sunday in May. And then the next two Sundays in May before Mem Memorial Day will be Let Freedom Ring. So we'll be doing that. But I'll put up a post about Let Freedom Ring. If you want to purchase it, you can just message me, and I will send you a PayPal invoice for the $15. So, okay. Are there any other questions about the borders or the quilt? Yeah, yeah, to Karen. Yeah, poor Karen. 
I hope your finger feels better. <laughs> that just that's a bummer. I've I've had several uh, students that have had that happen to them. So, okay. Any other questions to any but for for any of the borders or anything? So I'm anxious to start seeing your quilts. Are you guys putting them together yet? Are people starting to put them together? I know people are working on it. So, okay. So we have kind of a plan then for the rest of oh, hi Barb. Um, for the rest of uh, April. So next week will be scan and cut. And then the, the then a software class. What is the software class? Um, the software class is gonna be, would you like me to hold that up too? Just a second, I can get that too. We're gonna do embossed letters. This was one of my favorite classes that um, we did years ago for with the Floriani software, and now we're gonna do it in PEP. So this says the um, this is the embossed letter towel, embossed monogram. These make great gifts for weddings, uh, graduations, and so on. And so that's what we're going to do the first week in May. And then the next two weeks in May, we will do Let Freedom Ring. And then we're going to have Memorial Day weekend off. And then the last weekend in May, we will do another scanning cut class. So I've got May pretty much planned. So, okay. All right. So if you have any questions message me if you want to get uh let freedom ring let me know so i will see you soon and um i'm always happy to hear from everybody so message me and and text me so okay good night everybody thank you have a good evening